Isn't it just gorgeous? Isn't it just absolutely beautiful? In fact, I'm going to spin you around slightly. I'm just moving myself. I've just moved rocks. There is, at the background there, there is the most beautiful waterfall just coming out the side. So, I'm coming on here today just to update you on what we've been doing because I've done some footage and one of the things about doing your own vlogs is that you record something and you just detest it. And seriously, I've not liked what I've done. I've done intros and I've thought, no, it's not right. So, I thought, I'm going to climb into the middle of the stream. In fact, I'm not totally, there's so many rocks down the edge there, I've not actually been in the water. Um, one of my feet's just touched the water, but it's okay. Um, the water's very, very cold water. So I'm going to start. In the opening of this vlog, Lorianne and I are talking about our five, that was no good, our five things for our sewing machine. I filmed mine and it just wasn't right at all. It was just something about everything that I'd done, it just didn't link together. And the one thing I like to try and do on my vlogs is to make certain that what I put out is good. I had a comment the other day about something being too fast, yet yeah, everybody else loved it. So I do try, I do try so very much. And I know if I'm looking to the side now, it's because I've got the, I've got the side screen on so I can see what you can see behind me. So five things about our sewing machine. Let's get on and have a little look at that. Right, Lorianne, five things that you want in a sewing machine. The top five sewing machine bits. My very favorite with this Bernina is the basting stitch. Now most uh, sewing machines have a basting stitch that go up to five millimeters. Uh, Berninas go up to six millimeters. And if you touch this basting thing right here, it will double it to double whatever you put in there. Right now it's 3.45, say it was four, it would be eight. Really quick basting. Love, love, love that feature. It removes the basting stitches very easily. Yeah, and I think most people's favorite is the scissors. Oh, absolutely. I love, love, love the scissors. Um, with the Bernina, I feel like I'm talking like Adam because he pretty much did the same video. <laughs> he <laughs> won't mind, he'll just love us just the same. Anyway, the Bernina one piece feet they're really nice. This is a Teflon foot, but the different feet. Um, and I love my little holders here that I've uh, put up there so they're easily accessible. I can vouch for that. Yeah. And it just slips on along with the dual feed foot that just pops down, which is awesome. And the So Steady Table. These are wonderful. They're actually made in Oregon, um, which is nice. And they're shipped all over the world. Um, but they're quite nice. There's different versions of it and different sizes of it. Um, and uh, this one is the wish table, I, I believe, and it has a little drawer in there with lots of spaces for your gadgets, which I haven't made use of, really. It's really good because it stops everything falling off. If you've got your extended table that you, we get with them, but with the so steady table, you've got more spread out space. Yeah. It's like having um, your sewing machine on a horn table. Yeah. A horn cabinet. Yeah. Like Rachel's is in a horn cabinet, so it's flush, and Sean's yeah. as well. So there you have it. Those are my favourites. I'm back up from the river, ready to re-record my sewing machine likes and dislikes. Obviously, as you know, I'm very lucky enough to have a sewing computer, and that is what they call the sewing machine I've got, which is um, a Benina 880. It's actually an 880+, plus, to be precise. It says 880 on the front, but Lorianne says 880 plus. And when they bought the plus out, it was a software upgrade. And the lady who had the machine before me had it upgraded. So that tells you that I actually bought my machine second hand. I bought it second hand from a dealer so that I knew it had had a service history. I knew that it had been well looked after. The lady had previously bought it from my dealer. I'm going to put my dealer's name in the description box below. I use David Drummond's sewing machines in Edinburgh. He's been in business selling sewing machines for very nearly 50 years in the shop, but 50 years dealing with sewing machines. So that's a long time. So he clearly knows what he's doing and he offers old fashioned customer service. David does not pay me to say this. He does not give anybody discount because I send them up there. He gives you a fair, honest 
deal and he deals with you personally and he's very efficient at his job he knows exactly what you want he can name a sewing machine like that i'm not going on any further otherwise he's going to be inundated by you lovely people call so here we are this is my sewing machine and i've got it set up because i'm about to work on my austin dress and i have some sewing to do which is around the neckline and i'm going to come to the side so you should just see my hands coming in and the number one thing i really want on a sewing machine is a free arm now this is where it allows you to, to, let me show you on, yeah, I've got a neckline here and it allows you to sew, sew round in that circle completely freely. When I got my sewing machine, my little L now, just insert a little picture of her somewhere around here and it had a free arm and at school um, in the 1970s, I first encountered the Benino, it would have been the 6 series and then the 801 Sport really old Beninas, um, and they all had free arms like this. This free arm is traditional with a Benina. Now, I do know that people with a Janome sewing machine, you're lucky enough, you have a beautiful box at the front of your sewing machines. If you take that box off, you have something like this. So free arm, and that's this is why I like the free arm. You will have a free arm like this. You can get a cuff on there. You can get a difficult neckline on there. If you're stretching jersey, if you're making a billy or a pearl or a linden sweaters, you can stretch your, cut your cuff on there and you can stretch it through. It does work. Believe me, I've tried it. That's my number one. My second thing in a sewing machine is the ability to do a swing needle, which is your zigzag. So it allows the needle to move from side to side with ease. Again, my mum's sewing machine didn't have one. It was flat bedded in. It was a straight stitch machine. The third thing I like on the sewing machine is what's called the hands-free system. So when your foot is in the down position and you are pivoting, you put the needle down. Now the Benina has a function and a lot of machines do so that you can just press a button and the needle will go down. And then you can lift up this by pushing it with your hand, with your knee, and it will lift the needle and you can pivot to your work. I have to say, since I've got the touch buttons where I can lift my foot up myself using a button, I probably tend to use that slightly more than I do with the hands-free. But when I use the little banana I have for travelling and going to sewing courses, the hands-free comes out straight away. With the advent of the Semri computerised sewing machine also came automatic tension. So from about 1991, I've been fortunate enough to have automatic tension and it means that whatever you sew you should never ever have to alter the tension of your sewing machine if your stitch is wrong and you have automatic tension built into your machine you need to look at the other things that could be causing the tension to go wrong and machines do like to be clean especially computerized ones with sensors if there is any dirt in the sensor they will send you a message to tell you you need to clean me out Sewing machines to run efficiently and to produce that perfect stitch 100% of the time need to be cleaned. So the automatic tension will also adjust for if you're sewing lycra, heavy jerseys, anything. So as Lorianne makes coffee in the kitchen, I'm just going to show you the last thing I absolutely love about this machine. And really sorry, but you can see the reflection from behind. So I'm just going to move. This is the reflection from outside in the garden. So the next thing is the buttonhole. Now this machine has an automatic buttonhole. So in order to action all the things in the buttonhole function of the sewing machine, you need to have a buttonhole foot on. So I put the buttonhole foot on. So we've got a good selection of different buttonholes, including eyelets, and they are such fun to do. I did do some eyelets on um, some Tudor uh, costume for a friend of mine. Uh, he texted me and he said, with these fancy sewing machines that David has bought you over the years, do you have an eyelet function? So there you go. Um, so I've chosen a buttonhole here, just a standard buttonhole. I can go into the information section here. This section here allows me to alter the size of the button and you put the button on there and turn it up and down. How cool is that? And it alters the size of the buttonhole. So let's just say we want the buttonhole, that the button is... Let's say the button is only 11 millimetres long, a centimetre long. It lengthens the buttonhole, allowing for the bars. You go back to here and you can literally just sew the buttonhole at this point and it will record the buttonhole for you. 
you can also alter the distance between the bars here and this will alter the distance just in here. You can also go back into this, record it, um, that's your length and there's other functions that you can do and this is if you want to sew it manually so you know which of the button um, elements that you are doing first. Come to the, oh, oh that's better, oh that's better. We've come to the conclusion that swimming costumes, when you're busy, are not the best thing to make. Mine is made and I've learnt an awful lot from it. And what I've decided I'm going to do is, when I get home, I might make another one and try and do it as a bit of a sew-along to show you where I went wrong, where I could improve it. Because with the help of Izzy from Isoso and Rachel from Stitched Up, the patterns and just chatting to Laurie-Anne, I feel as if I've learned an awful lot about how to make a swimming costume, but there's a lot of room for improvement. And I think with sewing, it's really important that we remember that we're always learning. Every day's a school day in the sewing room. Are we not right, Laurie-Anne? Boy, are you right. Every day's a school day. We are now on to Austin dresses because we're determined to make something. <laughs> we're determined to make something and finish it. Yes. It's just been... Talk, we just want you to know that not everything goes right and there's nothing wrong if it goes wrong. You've just got to keep smiling because every day is a school day. There you go. As you can see, I slipped in earlier a little bit where Laurie and I were complaining about sewing. And I just want to talk to you about sewing aims, sewing games and in sewing fails. Believe me, last year when we were here, everything went superbly. The quilt went together, the fringe dresses went together. This year, it's been a little bit more of a bumpy journey. Just like the water trickling down here, it, it flows, but then it hits a ripple. And um, I made my swimming costume. I have finished my swimming costume. I'm really pleased with it. But it, every time you do something new, you learn. So it is, every day is uh, a school day in the sewing room. And last night we started on the Austin dress by Greyline Studios. Look at the picture of the Austin dress. Lovely, lovely pattern. Lorianne's using a very hard, um, quite a stiff denim. So she's, it's not a stiff denim, but it's a denim based fabric and it's, it's a little bit trickier to work with because it's harder to fold. Whereas I'm working with a sand washed viscose, which I got from Beyond the Pink Door. Beautiful fabric. And my version's got pockets on the front. So let's just say I came to a grinding halt. I'm moving my legs here. And I made a little move, because I'm sitting on a stone and my bottom was getting sore. Um, I encountered a few issues with putting the pockets on. Laurie Ann came to the rescue. We've actually taped around the pockets. I'll just put a little bit of bushage in here so you can see it rolling. Tack and finish off later. And the point I'm coming to is, when you're doing your sewing, please don't put yourself under pressure because to, to put yourself under pressure to achieve something by a set day is going to lead to problems and you're not going to enjoy the process. And I think Laurie Ann and I found that early on with the butterfly dresses. I mean, I have emailed um, Atelier Brunette and they've very kindly emailed back, but I think the point I'm making that's wrong with the pattern, which is lost in translation, has been lost in translation in the email. I tried. So tomorrow it's Quilts of Valour and did they ask for English scones or did I offer to make them? I can't remember but we've made Mary Berry cheese scones and the kitchen smells divine doesn't it? They taste divine as well. They do. Yum. Yes so they're getting scones and we're going to do a cream cheese, chive cream cheese and garlic mix to go on the market. So, really so we've arrived at Quilts of Valour. Where does it have a number on? I'm just coming over here look. This lady's got a really special um, machine, it's a Quilts of Valor Genomi, and it's a 3160, a special edition, and QOV means Quilts of Valor, and it's a huge, huge uh, thing in America. Can you just hold up your sheet for me? Can you hold up the sheet? And when you, you come, you get a special foundation reference thing as to what you have to do to make the quilt and the specifications. And people meet up in places like this on a regular basis and they make quilts for the soldiers. In the Montevideo Sewing Centre, just outside the centre of Portland. And we've got um, a faith supper, faith supper, faith lunch. 
and we'll have a show and tell later. This is really lovely. People are gathering together to make quilts for veterans. And I keep thinking that this is something we need to do in the United Kingdom. Oh, we really do. Anyway, we've come over to look at the overlockers because Jane is very keen to buy a new overlocker and um, she makes this sort of dance where she has this one. And her husband has said, I think you need something a little bit more substantial. And she's actually looking at the same one that I've got, which is the Acclaim. And we have over here, Lorianne and J Jane are currently looking at the... Are these the feet for the overlockers? They are. Oh, I didn't know I could get those. <laughs> no. Oh, I don't Lace know. Lace applicator. Oh, yeah. A ruffling foot. Oh, ruffling, yeah. A uh, Teflon foot. Oh, a Teflon oh. foot would be good. How much is that? So many. Eighty. Eighty dollars. Oh. It was eighty dollars. I could buy some bottom. Kimber Bell. Oh my God! There's the Kimber Bell stand. I'm just going on to the desserts here. This is. I'm going to say it properly. In Americans, they call it zucchini bread. So it's like a courgette bread with chocolate chips in. Who's made the zucchini bread? Usually, I put chocolate chips in. Yeah. I think it's got chocolate chips in it, isn't it? Gorgeous. And this cheesecake here is utterly divine. It's managed to, to yeah, spread it itself like out between as many people as we've got here. And that's my little bit left here. And it's been made by the lovely Sue, who is apparently the Oregon Quilts of Valor baking queen. <laughs> Right, we're going, we're going. I've met Rosie. She Hi. loves to sew, which is used by YouTube videos I today. do, I do. I need to ask, did you use Tamlin and Rachel as well? Oh, I don't remember. I do so many. Did you watch Tamlin sewn on the time? No. Oh, no, I need to check out Tamlin. Okay, yes, yes ma'am. And Rachel stitched up. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Rachel's got Top Tip Tuesday. And the crafting, the crafting sewing is what's in So this is a to crafting. Me. The crafting is sewing. Yeah, crafting. And my maiden name is Bentley, so you know. Yeah, British. I'm this, I'm this. Oh, it's not going oh, to the side. Are. Here we are. Sorry, we've gone to the side. Oh, fine. And we've got a new subscriber over here. <laughs> Say hi. Hello. Hi. And your name is, just remember your name. My name is Susan. Susan. And she has been cutting out all day. Yes. Rosie has learned to sew with the aid of YouTube videos from all over in the UK. I did. Well, that's just I so did. wonderful. I it's did. just so wonderful. Oh my goodness. So good to meet you. So good. Oh, power tools with thread. Oh, definitely. I that's Becky Thompson from Power Tools with Thread. Right. Auntie Rosie's. <laughs> and be kind. I love be that. Kind. Yeah. I love that. So there's this machine. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my goodness, that's a single racketeer. Oh. I've never used it. Maybe I'll bring it next time. Yeah, and it's so wonderful. You have the power cable for it? Yes, I have everything. Right in here. So single racketeers. Oh, the, the manual. And all the all the cams. all the all the cams. Cams being like Oh my word! We couldn't. Oops, sorry. It's all right. We couldn't figure out what this was. We couldn't even get the box open. Maybe it slides. There it goes. So, oh, look at that! Needles. Oh, you've got the screwdrivers and everything. Screwdrivers. They're red. They'll this match. Has been look at the well red that matched that sewing machine. That red one. Yeah. Oh wow! To get an original. Th um, I know. That kit. And she just gave it to me. This whole setup the is whole like $500. Thing. And it looks like it's, you know, you've got the service dates on from, is it cabbage? Yeah, That's they just. In California. Yeah. They just, uh, they just serviced it um, at that machine there. And then she gave me those three bags, four bags Maverick. of flannel for, for, the the, for the kids to use. In the, what's it called again? 4-H. Um, 4-H. So 4-H is hand, head, health, and, and heart. Oh. And so the kids work, work through that. The, 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 the motto is make the best better. Brilliant. And they have, it's worldwide. It was the last machine, I believe, that they made in the 1960s that didn't have a bunch of plastic in the gears. If you took this off, it's all metal. It's all metal. That's yeah. why it's so heavy. And where is After, it made? Uh, it was made 
well, I know it was made in America. And I'm not Wouldn't sure it that, say that, that um, Scotland. Oh, actually, it was made in Anderson um, on the East Coast. Yeah. So they are called cans. So they are basically discs that go in. Exactly. And what they do yeah, the, is the um, stitches. A cam is always set in the off center. Oh, right. So it's always this, like an oval. So it'll do. A cam will make these different um, stitches. Look at these. These are alone. very difficult to find. This oh. alone is a very expensive oh, part. Oh, for the bobbin. Uh, it's a third. It's an extra one, and I can't remember. Um, in fact, I don't recall that mine had two, but I guess it must have because it's the same machine. So. So what? This has yeah, to go here for the holder. Bobbin. And one of those holes for the bobbin. But I'll these, be looking. These are um, oil holes. Oil holes, and you have to oil these machines a lot. And yeah, I can't remember. I'm, I'm so really excited. This thing she said she, thing is she got really, really thing. spoiled with her genome. Yeah. So she wanted to give it up. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so she's given it to me. Oh, I'm so happy. It's well. fantastic. And it's a uh, there are society. a lot of YouTube videos on this. I have moved back just in case because this, the speed of these waves is getting, you know, they're pretty fearsome. Pretty fearsome. Don't know if that one is going to make it to me. Yes, it has. Oh. I've got my feet in the Pacific Ocean. I stand here on the Pacific Ocean. I'm going to say goodbye today. I hope you've enjoyed our little journey down to the coast. The weather is meant to be like this today, down the coast, we've got sea prep, we've got some rain coming in, but up at Crater Lake, it should be better. The weather's getting better tomorrow and into the weekend until I fly home. This has been forecast. Sadly, in the States, like the rest of the world, they are experiencing the most horrendous weather. Um, and as I say goodbye today, before I say my thank yous, I want us all to say about people across the world. That's my feet getting very wet and I'm going to move over across the world who are suffering the most horrendous weather at the moment. That's our friends. I'm thinking primarily in, in Scandinavia. There have been some of the most horrendous floods in Scandinavia. Accidents in Sweden. The east coast of the states. Our friends over in the east coast in the southern like in the Alabamas, the Oklahomas, that sort of area, they're suffering horrendous weather, tornadoes, thunderstorms, flash flooding. And sadly we've heard tonight Hawaii is not suffering as well. So I'm going to say thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting. But at the moment, please, can we spare a thought for all those poor people that really are suffering at the moment? And on that note, I'm just going to say goodbye.